Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading verses 26 through 38. And this is what it says. During Elizabeth's six month of pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, the Lord has blessed you and is with you. But Mary was very startled by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting might mean. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has shown his, you his grace. Listen, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How will this happen since I am a virgin? The angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will cover you. For this reason the baby will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Now Elizabeth, your relative, is also pregnant with a son, though she is very old. Everyone thought she could not have a baby, but she has been pregnant for six months. God can do anything. Mary said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. Then the angel went away. Pray with me. Lord, you can do anything, not just long ago, but today. And I ask for your presence, the power of your spirit to live in and through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, this is the season. What is it that prepares you for Christmas? Is it the singing? I like the singing. And I think the singing is going to be one of those things that, that I, I miss the most. We get together all, all week long at different times during this season to, to sing together, but now not so much singing. We will have it online, and I, I hope that you'll, you'll continue to look for that on our church website. Today is one of those days at 3 o'clock. Also, Christmas Eve. But the singing, the singing is, is an important part of it. But it's not just the singing, the stories. This morning we read one of those stories. There's stories all throughout Matthew and, and the Gospel of Luke that we hang on to. That are, they're, they're sticky stories. We remember them and our imagination gets caught up in those stories. And, and uh, you can ask any, any child, how many wise men were they? And they'll tell you, three. The only problem is, is that's not in the Bible. Um, the, the, there are three gifts, but three wise men, that's where our imaginations take over. We say, well, there must there are three gifts, there must have been three wise men, and we kind of, kind of fill in those areas. Well, that's the way it is with one of those sticky stories. We remember it, and we, we 
tell it so much that it takes on a life of its own sometimes. But three wise men, that's not in the Bible. That's in our imaginations. Ask a child, who said no room in the inn? And a child will tell you, well, that was the innkeeper. Well, actually, there's not an innkeeper anywhere in the Bible. It does say there was no room for them in the inn. And so our imaginations kind of take over, and they say, well, you know, there must have been somebody at the desk saying, if you'd made a reservation, you'd have a room, but to the barn with you. Well, that person's not in the Bible. It, it's our imaginations. And that's the way it is with those sticky stories. that they, they become a part of us, and that's a part of what prepares us here in this season. I love these kind of stories. And we've got the story right here that I read this, this morning of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary. So often we see this story as, as, as Gabriel asking Mary, will you take part in God's great plan? Well, I think we're a little more comfortable with, with Gabriel asking questions rather than telling Mary. But there's not a single question in what Gabriel says. Gabriel's telling Mary what's going to happen. And he does it pretty emphatically you will become pregnant he will be great he will be named Jesus his kingdom will never end he will be holy he will be called son of the most high that Gabriel saying this is what will happen well I don't know that that we that we're that comfortable with that I I, th I think you and I tend to want you know the the life that we planned but then there's this other life over here, this life that we didn't plan. That certainly Mary had a life that she planned, and it tells about it. She was engaged to Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter. And I don't know the details of those plans. Imaginations can jump in and begin to think about those details, but the Bible doesn't give that. But there is a life that was planned there, and, and, and this story lets us know she had a planned life. But there's this life that she didn't plan. And when the two of those come crashing together, well, her name was Mary, and I think she has something to teach us today. In, in 2020, in 2020, I, I don't know about you, but there's a whole lot of this this year I didn't plan. I never had a pandemic on my calendar. And even when, when the, the pandemic started, I, I was looking forward, and I was going, well, certainly we'll be back together by Easter. Well, that didn't happen. And then Easter came and went, and we said, well, certainly when summer comes. And then Christmas. Well, certainly it'll be over at Christmas time. No, there's this life that we planned, that we put on our calendars, that we sink to the cloud. It's on our iPad. It's on our, our computer. It's on our iPhone. But then there's this life that we didn't plan. And in 2020, that life has become maybe more prominent than ever before. And we realize that there's a life we planned and a life we didn't. And those two lives have come crashing together. And Mary has something to teach us. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Her, her, her name was Mary. Her name was Mary, and she has something to teach us. Now, before I, I start getting into that teaching, I, I, I want to say something first. And the first thing that I want to say is I don't want anybody to walk away from this sermon and, and to think that I said God brought the pandemic because I do not believe that to be true. I don't believe that God brought the pandemic because I believe what the Bible says. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, it says that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory the exact representation of his nature. And if you want to know the nature of God, you look to Jesus. And never one time do we find Jesus giving anyone a disease. Not once. That Jesus didn't say, you know, you'd have a lot to learn if you had leprosy. And so he gave him leprosy. It's not in there. No matter how good our imaginations may get between I mean, drawing cause and effect together, that's not the life of Jesus. That's not the nature of God. Jesus didn't say, well, you'd learn to slow down if you had a limp. So he gave someone a limp. Nope. That's, that's our imaginations. 
What Scripture says is that Jesus is the the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His nature. And the nature of Jesus Christ is the nature of a loving God of redemption who heals the sick, who makes the, the broken whole, who wipes away all our sin, who conquers sin and death. Now, there is reality that we do live in a fallen world. The disease, the death, and disappointment are a reality. They're a reality. They're a reality of a fallen world. But the nature of a fallen world is not the nature of a loving God. That Jesus Christ gives us the nature, the character of a loving God. And that nature is one of redemption, of wholeness, who put the the salve in salvation. Now, Mary, Mary has something to teach us when that life we planned comes colliding with the life that we didn't. And her name was Mary, and what she chose to do when the life she planned came crashing with the life she didn't, what she chose to do is she chose to give her, her trust to God. Verse 38, this is the very last verse that I read this morning, and it says that it's Mary's response to everything that the angel Gabriel said. She said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. She chose to trust God. She chose to, to trust God. Back in 1981, Peter Cropper was a, a virtuoso violinist. He was a part of a quartet that went on a musical tour around the world. Some of the best musicians in the world playing some of the best music in the world. And the Royal Academy of Music wanted to make sure that Peter Cropper had one of the best musicians, excuse me, one of the best instruments in the world to play that that music with. So they gave him on loan a Stradivarius violin, a priceless violin, to which he took from from concert to concert. And in Finland, he was in a music festival, crossing the stage, getting ready to play when he tripped over a power cord and fell on this priceless Stradivarius violin. Not only did he break off the neck, but crush the body as well. When he returned it to the, to the Royal Academy of Music, they said, it can't be salvaged. Peter Cropper said, but I know a master a master craftsman who can restore the violin, but the Royal Academy wouldn't give the master craftsman an opportunity. Finally, they relented and and let the master craftsman apply his work to this violin. After months of work, he returned the violin to the Royal Academy of Music. And there, when he returned the violin, the naked eye couldn't see that anything was wrong with the violin. But that's not the true test of a violin, the way that it looks. The true test is, how did it play? How did it sound? And that's when Peter Cropper took the violin. The virtuoso violinist began to play this violin that he'd been been playing for months. And he discovered not only did it play better than it had before, that it, that it played better than it had ever played. And you and I, we have a master craftsman. His name is Jesus. And he, when, when that life we planned collides with the life that we didn't, he takes the pieces. He takes the pieces and he redeems He draws together those pieces that that we could never restore on our own. That the Christian faith holds on to to one great fact, and that great fact is, is the resurrection. And we hold on to one great doctrine, and that great doctrine is redemption. That there is no good news without the cross and the resurrection. That on the cross, Jesus 
took together broken pieces of you and me and made him into something that, that we could never make this life into, no matter how well we'd planned, no matter how well we'd tried. He took the death. He took the disease. He took the brokenness. He took the sin. And he wiped it away. And when he rose from the grave on the third day, he gave us his power to live in and through us. The power of the master craftsman alive in, in you and in me. You can trust him. You can trust him. Her name was Mary and she, she chose to trust God. And you and I can trust him as well. You and I can trust him as well. Her name was Mary. She chose to trust God, and she also trust, chose to, to give her life to help and to serve. Verse 39 says that Mary got up and went quickly to a town in the hills of Judea. Now, what's that about? Well, that was where Elizabeth lived, that she was related to Elizabeth, and immediately after the, the, the angel told Mary God's what God was going to do in her life, she went to Elizabeth to help Elizabeth. And Elizabeth's response was, why has this good thing happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? It wasn't something that she deserved. It wasn't something that she earned. That it was something that Mary chose to do, to reach out, to help Elizabeth. Years ago, the Guidepost magazine had a true story about a hiker who was hiking in the mountains. Snowstorm blew in on the hiker, and, and he wasn't prepared for it. His hands and feet, legs began to grow numb, and he knew that if he didn't find shelter, and find shelter fast, that he would be unable to walk. He'd be, na- be unable to get to shelter. And as he was making his way through the snow, he tripped over something, and when he turned back to see what it was, it was a fallen hiker. Did this hiker, his hands and feet, his arms and legs had grown numb and he'd fallen in the snow. So the hiker had a a choice to make. Would he turn back and help this man who'd fallen in the snow or would he go on to to save his own life and and to find shelter for himself? Well, he chose to turn back. He, He took off his wet, cold gloves and he began to rub down the man's arms and legs and hands and massage his feet so he could get up on his own. And he, he discovered that as, as he began to, to rub down the man's arms and legs and massage his hands and feet, that feeling came back to his own arms and legs and hands and feet. And later he was told by a doctor that in helping the man in the snow, that's what saved his own life. Well, that's a parable of why you and I were made. We were made not to save our own lives, but to give it for others, to help and to serve. And that's what Mary did. 2 Corinthians 4, 5 says, We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. Jesus said, Mark 10, 45, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. It's why Jesus came. It's why you and I are here on this earth to help, to serve, to reach out. This pandemic, this life that we didn't plan, when it's come crashing together with this life that we didn't, we have a tendency, we have a tendency to isolate, to shelter ourselves, to turn inward, and that will crush us. It's a time to to pick up the phone, to give a call, to send out an email, to let folks know that they matter to God and that they matter to you as well. There are others that are being isolated by this pandemic. And if we all turn into ourselves, if we all turn inward, we'll be broken. Mary has something to teach us here. Her name is Mary, and she chose, she chose to give help 
to give service, and it's why you and I were made. She chose to give trust. She chose to give service. And the third thing that I want to talk about this morning is she chose to give praise. Verse 46 is the beginning of the Song of Mary. And this is what it says. It says that Mary began to, to sing, My soul praises the Lord. My heart rejoices in God my Savior. She began to give praise. To give praise to God. A little while back, a woman turned into story to Clean Laugh website. It was a story about summer that she had given her children the Cinderella video. Well, they watched it all summer long, singing along with the songs. Well, it was a hot summer, so they also raised the windows. The mother didn't think that it made much of that her neighbors wouldn't be able to hear it, but she was wrong. She discovered when she was out in the yard that one of her neighbors having a roof being worked on, that the workman, one morning, one of them while climbing the ladder had shingles on his shoulder, and he began to sing in his deep, gruff voice, put it together, and what do you get? And two of the roofers answered him singing, bibbity bobbity bibbity bobbity bibbity bobbity boo Well, singing is contagious, and so is praise. That you and I, not only were we made for service, but you and I, we were made for praise as well. And it's, as, it's contagious. It's more contagious than a pandemic. And praise that comes when, when the life that we planned comes crashing together with a life that we didn't. That's the life that gives glory to God. E. Stanley Jones said the early Christians didn't stand around and and say, look what this world is coming to. Well, in the middle of a pandemic, we tend to do that. We tend to look around and say, well, look what this world is coming to. We can so easily see and be bitter by, because this isn't the world that we planned. But that's not what the early Christians said. They didn't say, look what the world is coming to. They said, look what has come into the world. And that's the song of praise that we sing this Christmas. We have a choice. We can focus on this life we didn't plan, or we can give praise to God for the life we do have. This morning, my invitation, my invitation is that, that you learn from Mary. And you choose to give trust to God. You choose to give help, service to others. And you choose to give praise. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, Lord that we might know that wholeness, that redemption, that healing. It's the reason that you came. And that, 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 that wholeness, that healing, that redemption, that it might not just be for us, but that, that we might be that song, that story that's offered into a world that needs to know your healing touch. Use us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, use us. Use us in a world that needs to know you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. 
Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.